We we are back, I believe. Hello. I guess uh, this is take two. <laughs> All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. So this is definitely the first time we've done this. Uh, this is Emoji playing Super Lumi live. Um, so tell us a little bit about this game. Uh, it is a uh, 2D platformer where the, which is focused on the character's double jump. Um, this category, uh, goal, the goal of the category is, uh, is to, uh, get all, uh, 51 exits that appear before the main ending. <laughs> so in this category, uh, you need to pick up um, 32 gold and 450 silver to unlock all the levels. Heading into the first uh, portal exit. Uh, you have to collect all the coins and it'll open up a gate to a hidden level. I'd like to point out to chat that uh, she is making this look incredibly easy. I actually picked up this game and started playing it. A little bit and by the time i got out of world 2 i had like 250 deaths this uh is definitely a pretty punishing game for your first play yeah most uh first playthroughs i've seen have around one to four thousand deaths uh i'm going to attempt to beat it in less than that hopefully hopefully So and the uh, cycle, there's a lot of um, kind of scary cycles. And we were talking earlier, and I think only something like 26 people have actually completed this game. Is that right? That is correct. Um, right now, yeah, right now the count is 26. Uh, at the time that I had found the game, it was only, um, five. Uh, one of those people was the developer. Uh, right there, the, uh, coyote jump is very lenient in this game. because it's my phone. I'm sorry. So right here I'm uh, I'm getting the momentum from uh, the platform that's going in the same direction as me. Putting my phone here, I guess. <laughs> All right, now we're in 
uh, World 2, uh, these arrows uh, give you your double jump back and they launch you in the direction of the arrow. And when I, when I noticed when I was playing through this, if you hit them from any point, it pushes you that direction. So you can get to them from the side or the bottom. Is that right? Yes. Uh, that is a triple momentum boost. <laughs> so that's how you do that. I was trying to figure out how to do that in my run. <laughs> yeah. I knew it was possible, and I knew you'd show me. Yeah, uh, double is a little easier to get consistently, but I just recently learned the triple. So. <laughs> and then this direct, this uh, level, the arrows. You could use the arrows, uh, point down to help you. And I'm using my double jump to shorten my height to get through there consistently. Very nice. This is another cycle based level. It has these, uh, these spinny platforms. And if, uh, if Chet hasn't uh, noticed it yet the like the little green signs that turn blue when you collect them those are checkpoint yes uh, throughout the run I'm uh, this is more relevant later on but you can uh, reset on a checkpoint to get the cycle that you want um, some levels I do that. many times. Hitting gold up there. Yeah, that, that gold took me a bit to find, and I thought <laughs> that hidden block was very evil. Yeah, it takes most people a little while to find. Yeah, yeah. Fortunately, there's a bit of a glint if you jump near it, so... It, here you can skip part of the auto-scroller by using your me momentum for the first half and then uh and then there like jumping in between everything unfortunately you can't get this but well, since we're in an auto scroller i will remind everyone that if you like what you're seeing here uh please give emoji a follow that's twitch.tv slash emoji but it's a zero instead of an o i believe yes and two m's Going after another portal. And so these blue platforms disappear after you use your double jump. Oh, I just barely made that. Ooh, that was close. And these. Still disappear when you use your double jump, so you have to be careful not to use your double jump, except for right there at the very end. Checkpoint reset here to make uh. This, that cycle's not possible without checkpoint reset, or not very easy to get. 
and then these yellow platforms only appear after you've used your double jump. That, uh, that skip right there is insanely hard to do. Oh my gosh, that was... I'm surprised I actually did it right now. That was impressive. <laughs> So these, um, these stage platforms with a circle disappear if you're on it for too long. Oh, vertical levels. Those are always fun. I have a history with vertical levels, as some people in the chat may know. about this game is how it uses a lot of these mechanics in many ways. Yeah, a lot of creative mechanics uh, and creative use of the mechanics too, which is always fun to see in a platformer like this. So I did the checkpoint reset there to get this cycle. Ah. Unfortunately, if you don't get that trick, <laughs> uh, it's pretty punishing. So right here we have another auto-scrolling level. However, you can speed it up by going on the edges of the screen as much as possible. Right here is another secret room. It is faster to go in this room even if you aren't collecting the silver. I, I didn't even know that room was there. It takes most people a little while to find. So don't feel bad. So something we were talking about earlier about how you found this game because someone was hoping there would be a speedrunning scene. I noticed when I was booting up my casual game that there are specific settings in the options for speedrunners. Were those available at launch or were those added in later? A lot of those were added in later uh, due to suggestions that we have made. Uh, for example, like... Um, like right now, the... Um, the in-game timer works properly when before it didn't. <laughs> that's that's always and helpful. But uh, also, there was a setting that was added that allows us to reset at, like, take a checkpoint to reset from, which, um... Which is good for practicing some, um, some tricks like the, uh, the double or triple platform boosts in, uh, one skull. Uh, here's another auto-scrolling level. Um, it's really nothing I could do to speed that up. We're now in a, a, a unfamiliar territory for me because this is farther than I got. All right. All right, that skip is also very difficult to do. Here, there's, um, there's another, another portal. Uh, this one's kind of tricky because 
it is surprisingly easier and decently fast to go in the opposite direction that the things are moving. It seems like these uh, rotating boxes are a common theme in the lettered levels. Is that? Oh, the um, the boxes that rotate the um, the screen that you're on only appear in lettered levels. I mean, the ones where uh, it ends in a letter. Hold on, what? Here's another uh, secret room. Uh, these guys I call Tokies. Uh, they run on like back and forth on set cycles. Those uh those key doors in the last level you were just on, is there any particular mechanic associated with those? I'm not sure what you're referring to exactly. I'll point them out next time they're on screen. I might have been miss miss seeing something. These green uh, clouds look pretty friendly. They've got some uh, some cool shades on. Oh yeah, yeah. Those are the chokies, I call them. I think it was the dev that came up with that. All right, this this level, uh, these platforms give like almost no leniency. I see a lot of people in chat talking about this game and like how cool it looks and how much fun it looks. This game is not very expensive on Steam, uh, so if you're interested in it and have a few bucks to spare, I would highly suggest yeah. checking it out. It's a ton of fun. It's um, it's six dollars uh, or like if you're in the United States, uh, probably like pretty close to the equivalent in other currencies. So it's definitely worth what I spent on it. Yeah. 
And about how large would uh, you say the speedrunning community for is this if only 26 people have ever beaten it? Uh, there are only um, five people who have done full game categories. Uh, there's numerous others who done IL runs. Such a shame that it's such a cool looking game and a very fun game it doesn't really have a big community. So, if anyone's interested, I would highly suggest uh, picking it up. And if you like it and want to get fast at it, consider uh, speedrunning it. Absolutely. So, this next level um, has a bunch of these uh, exclamation blocks. They stay indefinitely until you jump off of them, and then they disappear. Um, here you have to be fast enough to not be trapped by them, though. Because you can only jump off of them to make them disappear. They uh, block you from underneath. Now, as far as this category goes, uh, looking at the speedrun.com page, it looks like you the only one with a posted run. Is there anyone else running this particular category? Um, not to my knowledge, though. Um, there, there was uh, one other person who has done like any person says um. The uh, all levels token list and all levels finale categories, but they haven't been recorded. So while we've been talking, it looks like I completely forgot to mention a mechanic that uh, showed up in this world, and that was the uh, colored key cards. Looked like they were opening up uh, matching colored gate. Oh, um, coming up, you'll see a better example of that mechanic. Uh, this level mechanic, you want to collect uh, 13 silver. Because it'll open up a, um, a little moving platform that wouldn't appear otherwise. And there it is. It's a cheeky little secret there for people that are obsessively collecting things. Uh, platforms will switch, they'll toggle on and off, um, based on if, uh, you use your jump or not. You also do not want to be within the dotted lines when you use your jump, or else um, you'll die. Yeah, I had that happen in uh, one of the earlier levels with the uh, the gold platforms that come up after your double jump, and I squished myself. Like right here, they'll squish you. Not careful. Uh, 
fear is a big key card level. If you notice, uh, there's a red gate right at the beginning. Uh, you have to collect... You have to go find the red key. And that's gold number 32 that we need for this category, so we're all set on gold. Very nice. And here's the red key. <laughs> all the way up here. Yeah. So something else for uh, people that may be interested in this, even from a casual standpoint, uh, this game has some pretty extensive graphical options. You can adjust the scan lines and like the CRT warp. You can make this look like you're playing on a, you know, your old CRT from your your bedroom as a kid, uh, or make it look like you're playing just on a pristine monitor. It's uh, it's really cool the amount of love that the dev clearly put into this game. A lot of those graphic settings too, it's on. Uh... If you're finding that, like, on your computer it doesn't run very well, uh, you can set graphic to make it work a little better. Was this, uh, was this just a one-man development team? Do you know that? Uh, judging by the credits, it looks like he did almost everything. Uh, right there, uh, this, that level, a lot of people have trouble finding. Yeah, some of these warps are pretty well hidden, so if you're going for all levels, you might be, uh, doing some secret hunting. Yeah. Or even more so if you are going for 100% runs, because... Like a lot of the gold and silver are hidden. Yes. Well too. Some of those golds are just in completely evil places, I've noticed. Yeah, this warp particularly is pretty difficult to find because you have to go up through the wall. It seemed like a little bit earlier in the game the the dev was a bit nicer about marking those hidden walls and then about halfway through World 2 decided, you know what, nah. Yeah. Oh. Uh, here's a pretty nice mechanic. Uh, these cannons like to fire a bit extra. And the red arrows will shoot you in the direction of the arrow a lot, uh, a lot quicker. Uh, both of those mechanics are only found there. So, these spiky platforms actually block bullets from these green cannons. Ah. Oh well, I guess I have to wait. <laughs> Uh, that reset will um, set up those platforms perfectly for me. And same with that reset. So how long? Uh, how long did it take you to like? I guess learn slash develop this run. Um, I have been running for almost a year. Uh, this, this category, I started December of last year. And I've had, I think, 
25 PP in grind. In addition to like dozens extra that I completed anyway. Overall, almost 700 hours in the game. It's a lot of hours. I can probably only name a couple of games I put that much time into, so. Uh, here we see these, um, these color changing platforms that go from green to red, um, and then they disappear. Gives you a nice warning when it's gonna disappear. You could just go straight through that. Platforms are merely a suggestion. So, this is the first level with fields. Uh, this field, if you're touching it, it gives you your double jump back continuously. So, you effectively get infinite jumps while within it. Oh, well, that's a fun mechanic. For anybody that may just be uh, joining us or has missed other runs in the marathon, I just want to remind everyone that VODs for the runs will be posted on YouTube about 24 hours after the run has ended. So if you want to see this run in its entirety or rewatch it, uh, just make sure that you look up and subscribe to Games Done Quick on YouTube. You so that secret room there is faster than doing like, that section of the room normally. And that's our thir 32 gold exit. Uh, these blue fields right here will um, have the gravity making your jumps a lot higher and floatier. graphic setting mostly because of this room. It can sometimes be hard to see yourself otherwise. Oh, so close. shows that this game can be uh, pretty brutal. It's uh, definitely a precision platformer at its best. So here you want to get enough momentum to make it over that. And here you have to use both of your jumps, so you have to navigate these without using jump.
the uh, for chats asking the the blue fields uh, make your jump higher and a bit floatier. You said right? Yeah, uh, halves the gravity. Yeah, so it's half gravity. going straight down that way is a lot harder than it looks. I'm getting flashbacks to a level in one of my runs. And then these red fields right here double gravity. So it makes your um your jump a lot um a lot shorter. Uh, it's got to be fun to manage having the blue doing half gravity and these kind of orange ones doing double gravity in the same level in the level. That last jump right there is um, one of the hardest required jumps in this category. Where it was like half in the red field and like half in normal. And here we get to see all the mechanics. Ah. Get um the arrows have returned. Uh lasers have returned. actually faster to take the secret. Uh, these don't appear anywhere else in the game. These re ricocheting bullets. Oh, that room is uh, quite a room. ready for space and this is my favorite pixel in the game <laughs> <laughs> nice little wall clip there it's actually like one uh one pixel that's on the the door that hangs over for i don't know what reason This room is pretty difficult to manage with these blocks and that jump is pretty precise. Yeah, it definitely looks like it. This, this room looks like something straight out of I want to be the guy. <laughs> and this next room... Um, back, uh... Like... Earlier days of running, I used to call this, uh... The pizza room. As in... If you... If you can order a pizza, and the pizza... Um, arrives after I complete it. It's a good run. Um, fortunately, I don't have that problem anymore. <laughs> I 
just realized the level of that name, <laughs> or the name of that level, is oh, so good. Tower of Power, ten out of ten level name. This is the final world, right? Uh, final world of this category. It's the final normal world. Uh, there's actually a bonus world. Um, any of you who have ever seen me do, um, like all levels Kokomus or all levels Finale, it would include the bonus levels. Uh, here's a pretty unique mechanic. These, uh, these platforms go in the direction of the arrow, but only when you're standing on them. And it'll scroll back to its original position when you jump off. Uh, yeah, what who here likes auto-scrollers? I don't think anybody likes auto-scrollers. It's a game's done quick. answer because I don't like them if I can skip them. That was a strong skip there. That saves about a minute. I swear these levels just make my head hurt <laughs> and seeing you do them so fast is just so astounding. Definitely first try. So here we have um, invisible platforms that here um, when you touch them. Even the minor skips in this game are just visually impressive. Looks like they shimmer a bit and then they shimmer a bit strongly when you get close to them, from what I can tell. The, um, the silver and like a few of the other things in the level 
also content to where they are. Alright, here you have to not use your double jump. Not use your double jump and not um, not get hit by the ball of death that's chasing you. So about at this point, we're coming up near the end of the uh, the run, right? But how many more levels do you got? This level and then three more levels. That jump looks scarier than it is. One of the only things in this game that does. Uh, here is some of the tightest platforming in the game. Anything that's glowing and orange kills you. This just reminds me of a mix between Super Meat Boy and the Great Cave Offensive from Smash Brothers. <laughs> and both of those things give me anxiety. So something that's not immediately obvious is that while you have those portals active, there are different obstacles in the level. So in that particular level, she had to do it quick enough before the portal timer ran out, or else she wasn't going to have the platform she needed to progress. Like right there. Yep. It, commentator's curse. I apologize. the hardest one that I go for. So time will be coming up soon. Uh, about a minute. If I do everything correctly. All right, can you guys believe that it's almost over? All well, guys and gals. What is this rainbow of static that is just following you? Um, me and the other runner. 
players of this game call this the bitrate monster, because it always messes with our bitrate. Yeah, no, that is... <laughs> that is an encoding nightmare. Um, if it touches you, you die. That's fun. And it follows your exact movement. And it trails behind you for quite a bit of length. So here the object is to get all four keys and get the exit. Time. Time. Great run emoji. That was fantastic to watch, and I hope everyone in chat got a kick out of it. ending of the game. Not really a whole lot to it, just credits. But it gives you a screen that tells you how you did. That's pretty uh pretty nice of the developer. So there we go. But, it is um, fifty one out of sixty is what we complete to this category. Forty four deaths, that is a really small number compared to what it's gonna take me to beat this game. Yeah, as I said, most first playthroughs I've seen are like between one thousand and four thousand deaths. So don't feel bad if you're not getting in forty four deaths. Um, I'll, uh, shout out, uh, first to Hobo Cannibal for making the posts on Reddit to, for everyone to play this game. Uh, shout out to, uh, Maz K, um, for making the game. Uh, shout outs to Oryx, uh, Game Guy, uh, Butcherberry, and Elomavi, and they are the other four runners of this game. And shout outs to the other 25 people who have been in this game. Excellent. Uh, shout outs to you, Emoji, for putting on a great show for us and for allowing me to be here with you. Um, make sure you give her a follow. I mentioned it earlier, but it's uh, twitch.tv slash emoji with a zero and seven O and two M. Uh, I also want to shout out a couple other brief things. I just want to remind everyone that this marathon happens in part by support from viewers like you, just like PBS. Uh, so please consider subscribing or, you know, bits, what, what have you just, everything, anything you can provide for us means the world. And then also that HDQ run and volunteer submissions open this Thursday, August 22nd. You can find information on it on the GDQ website if you're interested in submitting a run or volunteering to help put on the event. 